So we arrived, we parked the car above the clouds. The Milky Way was overhead, Jupiter and Saturn were shining bright. Everything was perfect, but then the clouds started rising. We were engulfed in fog and mist. And then we started our hike. It was a one hour steep incline. So we got out of the clouds, the clouds were below us, and then clouds started forming above us. <laughs> For the past five nights, we haven't had clear skies. We've had some nice mornings and daytime, but every night has been cloudy or foggy so far. And if I don't photograph the Milky Way in the next 24 hours, I'm gonna lose my sh Alright guys, welcome to Karadeniz in the northeast of Turkey. It's a region I've been meaning to come to for many years now. All of my Turkish friends keep telling me I have to come here. It's a mix between Wales on steroids and a poor man's Alps with less people and a sprinkling of Dolomites. <laughs> it's a really beautiful place. There's little mountain villages scattered everywhere in places where there shouldn't be villages. The roads are absolutely crazy. <laughs> But the, the surrounding mountains and lakes are absolutely stunning. We've just been exploring. This is the fifth night here now. We haven't had much luck with uh, the night sky. The first night we went to Pokut Yaylisi, which is quite a popular mountain village. And when we arrived, it was perfect. There was a cloud inversion. Milky Way was overhead. Jupiter was shining bright. And as soon as I went to grab my camera, the cloud just woof, took over us. And we were in the mist for the rest of the night. Second night, we went over to the, the next village over, Salio, let's say we spent the entire night in the mist. So then we decided on the third night, we would try and get super high to try and get above the clouds. We got a little Dacia Duster 4x4. We took that to the top of Tarpur, Yailisse, which is about 3,000 meters. And when we arrived, we were in the mist and we slept in the car. But when we woke up in the morning, the clouds had dropped and we were above the clouds. After that, we went to another mountain village called Vercinik. From there, we hiked up to uh, Kapiligullar, really, really nice lake. But again, we just didn't have much luck with the weather, even though we were 3,000 meters up. Spent the night in the mist, and it didn't clear until the morning, so I couldn't photograph the stars. And then last night, we decided to come here to Avosor, Avosor Gullu. And it was okay, the clouds kept coming and going. We got a few shots, um, at least, but we decided to stay here for one more night just to try our luck. We've also got the Shimoda Explore 60 litre bag, which I've been putting through its paces. And I'll be sharing my conclusions, I guess, at the end of this video, once I've had a chance to really put it through its paces and get used to it. And But it's got a little wander. Seeing as we've got a bit of daylight, I'm just gonna walk around the lake try and find various compositions facing different angles, different directions, ready for tonight. So this is one option. You got the waterfall flowing down into the lake. Nice mountain on the left. The only problem is it's facing north northwest, and there's not much going on in the night sky in the northern hemisphere in the north, other than Ursa Major, the Big Dipper. So 
Could be nice. Ursa Major is in a nice orientation right now. And I could use my Stargo filter to make Ursa Major pop up. But the composition itself is pretty damn nice. This is another good option. You've got the stream acting as a leading line up to the mountains in the distance, but as you can see, it's starting to cloud over. <sighs> oh man. I'm seriously gonna lose my sh Option number three, I've come to the other side of the lake to look back at those mountains on the other side which means I won't be able to get the Milky Way core, but the Cygnus region and the Cassiopeia region of the Milky Way will be just above that mountain there somewhere. So different option to the, the Milky Way core. The problem with the Milky Way core here is that it's behind these enormous mountains here. So I'm not sure if I'll even be able to see it, but I'll get the Great Rift. There's lots of good shrubbery and rocks for the foreground over here. Hopefully the wind stops so we can get some reflections. Hopefully these clouds disappear. You can only hope. <laughs> Alright, so I'm just going to run you through the main features of the bag, of course. It's a rear access bag. You can get all your camera gear from the back. You can have various different size ICUs. You can have a small, medium, or a large. And you can also choose between DSLR or mirrorless. So they have slightly different sizes. We've also made this little shelf with one of the folding things. And under there is another lens, just to make the most of the space. You can also, if you want, use one of the small ICUs sideways and have side access, back panel, super padded, nice and comfy. The straps are probably the best thing on this bag. They're super wide, shaped really nice for the body. They're super comfortable. And then you can adjust the height of the strap at the top, which just makes the bag super comfortable. The hip strap, again, just brings all the weight onto your hips. And that's a really awesome feature. And these straps at the top really help to pull the weight onto your back and it makes your bag feel a lot lighter. My biggest problem with the F-stop Tilopa, which I've been using for the past three years, is that when it's heavy, it's not very comfortable. It doesn't fit right to my body. The hip belt doesn't go anywhere near tight enough. The strap's not adjustable and you can't really pull the weight in as much as you can with this bag. This feels a lot more like a, a hiking bag. And the tripod strap onto the side nice and easy. There's a big pocket on the front, which I've been using to put my sleeping bag um, and sitting mats and there's straps on the front to strap stuff on. You've got a huge expandable pouch at the top. You can chuck your tent, your clothes, your food, your stove and everything else. And then the lid on top also has a huge pocket on the top. And it also comes with straps so that you can strap stuff to the outside of the bag as well. Another thing I really like about these straps, the hip straps, have these little loops where you can hang your walking poles. Walking poles are really annoying, tend to get in the way. When you can just hang them from the hip belt, freeze up your hands so you can use your camera and, and go about taking pictures. So I really, really like that. On the straps, you've got a elastic pocket where you can put like a water bottle or your telephone. For me, it's my head torch because I really always need access to my head torch. And then uh, on the other side, I just keep an intervalometer because I use that quite a lot doing the astrophotography. There's a whistle on the chest strap. And then if you use a water bladder, you can slot it down into this uh, pocket here. Straw comes through a little hole here and you can strap it onto the front strap in this dedicated loop here. There's also a this padded door also doubles up as a laptop sleeve. So if you travel with a laptop or a tablet, you can chuck it in there. But yeah, I'm going to put this through its paces and I'll let you guys know my final conclusions once I've had a good, uh, good few trips with it. But so far, really impressed.
So it would turn out that all of the planning that I had done during the daytime was going to be in vain because there were clouds forming below us and rising up from the valleys below and there were also clouds forming above us that looked like they might be bringing rain. And yeah, we spent the entire night in the rain. It didn't stop all night. And then when we woke up in the morning, we were in the clouds and the campsite was just a complete bog and marshland of puddles and water. And pretty much everything was soaked, so morale was pretty low, so we decided to just pack up and get the hell out of there. Fortunately, I did have some shots from the hour of clear skies from the first night when we just arrived and this panorama here along with a nice simple shot of the reflections when it was calm and Edda who was helping me out on the trip also managed to take her first astrophotography shots as well. Literally after two minutes of me explaining the basics she was off and just firing away these shots. With the weather set to continue as it was, we decided to check into a bed and breakfast called Kochira, but we were not prepared for how much we were about to fall in love with this place and the people who live there. <laughs> The plan was to get warm and get dry, check up on emails and just generally have a rest but Yok iyi abi ya. Çok teşekkür ediyoruz ama ya. Ya. Of. There's way too much light pollution from the village at the last spot so you couldn't really see the Milky Way. But two guys from the hotel that we're staying told us to take a little road up onto the hillside so that the view would open up and we could get away from the lights. But the only problem is we've never been here before so we don't know where to go or what to shoot but we've just stopped at the roadside and found just a nice bush. <laughs> and there's a really nice view of the mountains with the Milky Way and a bit of cloud coming over the mountains. Everything's looking really nice. So this was the first shot that I took and it probably would have been better if I'd focus stacked that bush in the foreground but I was more interested in trying to find some more compelling compositions than this because it was pretty bland. It's not bad but the best view is over this way. But it hasn't got the Milky Way, I really want to put the Milky Way like over there. But obviously I'm not going to do that. But I think I might as well take some photos of this view anyway because the cloud invasion is awesome. <laughs> so we'll try. So 
So even though it doesn't feature the Milky Way and nothing more than just some basic stars, this view was totally unforgettable. So I really wanted to grab just a simple composition of the view. Alright, so even though we haven't got the Milky Way, the view is incredible. And without the Milky Way as a subject, I'm going to try and put Edda onto a nice position just to add a bit of human interest and hopefully that can give some nice scale for the view and it just makes people feel like they want to stand there and enjoy this view so a little bit more is it safe <laughs> So this was probably the only image from the trip that I was actually quite happy with and it's a panorama using the 15mm Leoa lens, just a single row, just so I could squeeze in the Milky Way, the view and Edda up on the rock as well. So once again, the cloud has risen, <laughs> we're in the mist, but oh man, it feels so good to get a few shots, some of them are going to turn out okay, some of them not so okay, but I was really starting to lose hope that we weren't going to see the stars again on this trip, so super happy. The view was incredible. Can I see your victory dance? Please show us. Yeah! Okay guys, so that was pretty much the end of the Corridonese adventure and it certainly won't be the last. I definitely need to go back there. There's so much left to explore. There's so much potential there. And it'd be nice to go back with some better weather and to catch up with some of the, the really, really wonderful people that we met there. But final conclusions on the Shimoda Explore 60. I'm going to try and keep this short and sweet, but this is definitely going to be my bag for the foreseeable future. Now, those of you who followed me will know that I've been using the f-stop to Lopa for the past few years and this has been all around the world with me and it's worth mentioning that these are both designed by the same guy Ian Miller he left f-stop to start up the whole Shimoda thing so why am I switching from the Tolofa to the Shimoda the first and the biggest reason is the comfort like these straps the wide straps they just conform to your body so well it's so comfortable and any review on youtube of a shimoda bag you will definitely hear a mention of the comfort the straps are adjustable as well so that just adds to the comfort and one of the biggest problems i was having with the f-stop was that the hip belt just didn't really get tighter on my hip so it wasn't transferring the weight to my hip um, but the the shimoda does go nice and tight and transfer that weight really really well another big issue i was having with the f-stop is that when you pack it really full of stuff like sleeping bag and tent the back panel here starts to bulge and then it's just like pushing against your back and it was so uncomfortable which is not good when you're doing a big long hike with a tent and a sleeping bag and all your camera gear the shimoda the back panel stays as it is it doesn't bulge it maintains the comfort as if it was like half packed and if you look at these bags they pretty much look exactly the same size and the F-Stop Tilopa is a 50 litre bag whereas the Shimoda is a 60 litre and I'm guessing most of that comes from the expandability of this top pocket here and the extra pocket inside the, the hood up top and that's another thing I really love about this bag is that if you're going out for just like a single evening shoot you can pack the bag and it's not too big um, but then if you decide you want to go for a night or two camping up on the hills you can use this expandability to get your sleeping bag and tent and food and stove and everything in there quite comfortably so it's nice to have a one bag that kind of does everything i love that it comes with straps so you can put extra stuff on the outside of the bag um, the f-stop series you have to buy the straps as extras also worth mentioning that um Picking up the 60 litre, I did have the 40 litre, which I took to Chile for the total solar eclipse. And I loved the bag, but I found that I just always wanted that little bit of extra space just to put a jacket, like a big jacket or some extra gear. And I found it quite restricted with the 40 litre. And obviously some people are gonna find 40 litres plenty. One of the big reasons I went for the 40 litre originally was because I wanted to take it on the plane as cabin baggage. 
Um, but then if you look at these bags, they're actually there's not much difference in the size. And I actually took this 60 litre on eight or nine flights every time taking it on as cabin baggage. So, you know, you've got a bag which if you don't pack it full of stuff, you can take it on as a cabin baggage. And then when you get to your destination, you can pack it full of tents and sleeping bags and take it for a night out. So that is it guys. We'll be announcing the winner of the Ben Rowe giveaway in this month's Wittens video. Entries have now closed. So we'll be picking a winner soon. So stay tuned for that. Make sure to hit subscribe if you haven't already. And if you're going out to enjoy the night sky anytime soon, I wish you good luck and clear skies.